I think in any treatment, what you do is you take the benefits of the treatment and, and relate them to the harms. And I think what we get here is a symptomatic benefit of about one day reduction in the duration of illness. But what we don't get is any reduction in the complications. So what's slightly disappointing here is that in children with, say, asthma, we don't get any reduction in the exacerbations of asthma. In addition to that, you get some harms of the treatment, and one of them harms is for about every 20 children treated, you get an additional one of them will vomit. And that can be a, a problem for children. Within the course of influenza and in, 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 in any illness, some children will vomit. So this is an addition to the normal vomiting that occurs. But one of the things you concern yourself with children is that they can get dehydrated. This is different, different to adults where the same scenario is not a problem. If you think about it, just the size of children, when you're under five in effect, you're actually smaller, so it takes quicker for you to get dehydrated. It's more difficult for you to actually get the fluids on board to recognise that's the problem, whereas an adult can take the measures much more effectively and quicker. There are ways that parents can treat children conservatively to keep their hydration up and that's one of the important measures to take in any infection for a young child. Well, I think the evidence base as it stands today is, is that what parents should do is actually have a discussion with their health professional or their GP to weigh up what the benefits are and weigh them benefits up in relation to any harmful effects to come to a decision as to whether that basically they should be treated. But in the, what we're seeing in a number, in the high proportion of cases, in the mild disease, that actually the benefits of, of treatment are not, do not outweigh any harms.